Hi, I'm Laura Binding and today we're going to talk through how to use the Viking Knit Tools. So here's some examples of what you can make with the Viking Knit Tool. So there are two different types of tools. You have a half inch tool, which is the larger tool. And then you have the smaller tool, which is the quarter inch tool. When you buy a kit, you'll also get a little drawing pin and this is really handy to help you to actually lift your wires up. And you will also need additionally a draw plate. So I'm gonna show you how to use these tools. The difference between the two tools are the top of the tool actually has a removable disc. And this is what is called the daisy. So you can see there that you can remove it. This, the large tool has 12 small holes in the actual tool itself, as you can see. This enables you to create a 12 loop Viking knit weave. The diameter of the tool itself is also larger to accommodate the extra um, loops that you'll be creating. With the quarter inch tool, you'll see that the diameter itself is smaller. And when you remove the daisy, there is only six holes. This obviously will create a smaller weave for you. So, the tools that you need, they are both great for creating different looks. And again, you'll be able to see that within the examples. So you'll see here on the larger necklace here that it's more loopy because it's been used on a larger tool. It means that you can create a more um, airy kind of look with your Viking knit and not be so compact. If you wanted to create it to be a little bit more smaller, a bit more delicate, then you would use the smaller tool. You can use them both together as well. And you can actually make a, uh, a Viking knit with the smaller tube and put it inside the larger tool. So you can actually use both of these together and create a really lovely look. So to get started for this, all you will need is some wire and some cutters. Now I'm going to be using some 0.4 and when you use a gauge of wire for this, it would be a 0.4 or a 0.6 ideally. If you go too high on a gauge of wire, you will struggle to create the actual weave itself. So I would advise for starting using a 0.4 gauge. So I'm just gonna cut a length of wire. When you're using this, you will need to add in, um, but if you can use a comfortable amount of wire, then that will obviously reduce the amount of times you need to add in. But I'm just gonna show you how to get started. Okay, so to start the weave itself, if I show you on the tool, you'll see that there are some drill holes. Now these go in a diagonal. So if I hold this here, You'll see this one starts here, but actually comes out a lower angle. There are two sets of these holes, but I only ever really use the top set. You'll also see here that there's like a little guideline. That's just going to help you to get started and get some nice starting loops. So to start off the actual weave, I'm going to take my point four and I'm going to feed the wire up through the lowest hole here, so that the short end was going to come up through the, the hole that is closest to the guideline, as you can see there. I'm then going to just bring that wire out, take the daisy section of the tool, and it doesn't matter which of these holes you start through, you'll just be able to feed it straight on and put that daisy straight into the tool. This will give you a nice clean start. When you actually want to create the weave itself, you can see when you have in your instructions, there were different patterns for different holes. So basically it will say, if you wanted to do a six loop knit, then you would skip every other hole. If you wanted to do a 12 loop, then you would obviously go through every hole um, and you just look at that pattern or you just divide the 12 by the number of loops that you actually want. So I'm gonna bring this wire up so that I've got just a little tail just here and I've got the long length of wire coming up through the top of the tool. I'm gonna hold this so it's nice and steady. And I'm going to go towards the right. So what I tend to do is bring the wire over towards the left and it's gonna go down into that little groove just there. And when I show you from the side, you'll see it's starting to form a little loop already. So then what I'm going to do is place my thumb 
to stabilize that. Find the end of the wire and I'm just going to skip two. So I'm just gonna go one, two and come up through that third hole. So you can see that I'm holding that, that little uh, loop there. Bring that wire up. And remember I, I said about this little guideline? This is where we use this to make sure that the wire stops at that sort of point. Now these are just your starting loops, so don't worry if they look a bit messy because these will be removed. I then rotate the tool so that the, the new loop is now in front of me again. I'm going to repeat the process. I'm going to make sure that that little wire just goes just into that little groove, forms that little loop and hold that in place with my thumb. Then I'm going to skip two more. So one, two and bring that wire up through the third. Bring that around and then again bring that into that loop. Every time I'm doing that I'm turning the tool so that I've still got everything facing me. And then just repeat one more time and you'll see there just bringing that around, rotate that tool and lock that into place. Now I've got a four loops here and I can see from the top I've got four little splashes of wire. The temptation is to come back up through that initial loop, uh, that initial hole. You don't need to do that. Once you've got your four pieces of wire at the top, you've got your even number of spacing, you have done your starter loops. We're now going to actually start the weave itself. So I'm turning the tool back around um, and there is a, a little join line on the tool. So what I find is I just turn very slightly the, the little daisy and then you can see quite clearly where that loop is. And what I want to do is bring the end of my wire and I want to go right behind that little loop. So you can see that there. And again, I'm just going to bring that around. Now, what is, oh, I actually missed that. So you can see, so that's not what to do, what not to do. Make sure you do go behind both of those wires. You can see there. And you'll know because you can see they're both collected. And I'm going to form this around to create that loop. That will be my first loop of my first row. Now, what you want to do is watch your tension. You don't want to pull that wire really tight and make really small loops. You just want it to be a nice natural stop. So I'm going to again place my thumb over that loop, turn it all around and repeat. So again, going behind that loop, bringing that wire nice and slowly around. You can see there's very little tension, just forming it gently to create that loop. Thumb in place, rotate that tool, bring that around. And you just continue until you're back at the beginning. I know I'm back at the beginning because I can see that little tail coming out of the drill hole just there. So what I'm going to do now, because I've done my first row, is I'm going to take my cutters and I'm going to just cut that wire. What happens is it removes that tail. That's quite important because if you forget to remove that tail and you continue to do the knit, what will happen is you'll actually lock that into place um, and that will trap it there. And if you're using a heavier gauge of wire, it's going to be really difficult for you to actually remove the, the weave from the tool because that wire will be locking it into place. So I try to get into the habit of just removing it after that first row and then continuing. You're just going to continue then as previous. So you're just going to go around. And you'll see I'm going behind the loop that I've just created previously. So just there, going around and Try to keep your rows as straight as possible. So these are actually going to be your columns because they're going to go down into nice straight lines. So you're just going to need to make sure that the point of your loop always goes directly down. So make sure it's going straight down and not to the side because that will bring your columns in and make them uneven. So again, as I said, you just continue going around and try to get the consistency of your loops until you are ready to remove your knit. So I'm gonna show you um, a knit that I've already made and show you what we do after. So I've already created a bit of knitting on this section here. Now you can play about with the knit and you can actually do what we call a double and a triple knit, which is where you go up a couple of rows and actually create a different look completely. But this is the single look just here. And what is great about this tool is you can remove the knit from the tool as long as you 
keep it to one side, you could actually replace it back onto the tool and continue your project. The main thing is that you haven't drawn it through the draw plate, which is what I'm about to show you. Okay, so what I want to do first of all is remove it from the daisy section of the tool. If I push the daisy down, the loops actually rise up a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is take my cutters, just cut the top, and then I can remove the, the little daisy, and then shake that, and then all you should have is one wire. So it's very important to know you will only have one end of wire, okay? So if there are more than those, if there's more than one wire in there, just give it a little shake and make sure that no wires have gotten caught in the knit. What I like to do is take that wire, take a pair of pliers, and I'm just gonna roll that in. So then there's no sharp edge and you're just tucking that into the knit itself. Okay, so to draw this through the draw plate, what I'm going to do is just form these little loops here into a line and just bending them into place. So you can see they go into a line like this. And then I'm going to take another piece of wire in a contrasting color. The reason I'm taking it in a different color is so that I can see the wire that is what's going to become my handle and I can remove it nice and easily afterwards. Now, all I'm going to do is collect all four of those loops with that wire or however many loops are in your knit. Bring that together and twist. And you want to bring the end of your knit into a sort of point like this. That will make it easier to go through the draw plate. So this largest hole will take a knit that's come off of the half inch tool. And obviously you can then go down the sizes. What you want to do is find the size of the hole that's probably about the closest to the knit that you've got. And you're just going to very gently pull that through. And you're going to go through a couple of times until it goes through nice and easily. And what we're actually doing is we're going to be conditioning, we're also going to be drawing this through, changing the look and shape of this and drawing this out into a long length of chain. So obviously it's going to become longer than the actual piece of knit that you created. So what I'm going to do is just continue to bring this through and reduce the size of the knit and obviously extend the length. And you'll see how it changes the lower down you go. And you can see there what difference that makes. And obviously what you can do then is you can stop at any size that you're happy with. You can also add gemstones. You'll see that there's a couple of examples where I've actually added gemstones into the knit itself as I've gone along. Um, and what will happen is they will almost go inside the tube um, those ones have been added on the outside and then it just the, the knit itself has gone around it On the bracelets, I've actually added gemstones into the center You can see on that bracelet there that you can flatten the knit if you want to to create a different look And you'll see on the silver necklace that I've actually added gemstones into the knit and when you draw it through they go inside the actual um, Viking knit so you can create a lot of different looks with this technique to finish the knit itself off, you've already got your section just here. What I would do is remove my handle and then, so if we just take our cutters and carefully remove that, you'll be able to place a jump ring in there. And then if you turn the piece around, what I do is you'll have a little tail and I just stitch those loops together. So if there's any loose loops at the end of this, I'm just going to bring my wire through, bring that together, and then you'll be able to add a jump ring or an end cap if you want to. So you'll be able to create lots of different looks with this jewellery, um, but just have a go and see what you can create.